In this video, I want to show you three ways of looking at audio in Adobe Audition. Starting with, of course, the waveform. Right here on my screen, you see a waveform. This is the way that most people are familiar with seeing audio. And if you know anything about audio, you know that these are depicting vibrations. And, you know, it's on the left hand, you, that's where the start position is. On the right hand, that's where the end position is. So it's basically a sort of a, a two-dimensional graph in a way. Uh, one dimension is time, and then the other is amplitude. And amplitude is shown by that waveform. Uh, one thing that you may not know, however, is if you zoom in really far, you can see this red line right here. This red line is indicating, uh, well, in, in decibels, it's shown by the infinity sign. I don't know why, I don't understand. Again, there's a, a lot I could learn about, about audio. But for some reason, the no sound is indicated by an infinity sign. And maybe that's because no sound is, is really a theoretical impossibility. Um, it's a, it's a theor theoretical idea. The fact of having no vibration. In, in reality, we're always dealing with some amount of vibration. And that's I don't know if that's the reason that infinity is used as a, an indicator of no quote unquote no sound but for some reason um, on the decibel scale inf infinitely high is no audio go figure so zero is always the number that you want to stay under when you're when you're editing audio because if it goes over that then you do what's called peaking and peaking is when um, in your headphones it sounds you know like kind of scratchy sound it sounds too loud and it's, and starts sounding scratchy uh and and you hear this sometimes utilized in like metal or rock music um, they'll do it on purpose they'll peak some of their audio on maybe on their guitar and so you'll get some of that like distortion and it, it kind of it can sound good but even then in a professional uh mix of of metal music or rock music they're still going to mix the actual recording down to where it's underneath that that zero because when it plays back on your device, on your phone, or in your headphones, whatever, um, it, it, one it could cause damage to your uh, to your whatever device is playing the music. Uh, two, it just won't sound right. It won't it won't be representative of what the artist was trying to create, even though they were distorting it at the time. So. No matter what, when you're doing audio editing, you always want to stay underneath that zero. Anything between that red line and above the red line to that zero is what we call amplitude. The amount of distance from the red line that this little green line is, is how high in amplitude uh, the, the audio is. Now you're probably asking, well, what's below that red line? We think of audio as pressure waves. You know, when you're when you're speaking or when you make some sound, uh, you know, you hit a hammer on a rock, a pressure wave, you know, extends out from the point of origin of that sound. However, although that's sort of true, think of it like a ripple in water it goes up but it also goes back down and that's what's happening in a waveform uh, so what you're seeing is actually a vacuum there's pressure and vacuum in every piece of audio uh, now theoretically you could just have a pressure wave but uh, but in the real world you're always going to have a vacuum so if you've got two pieces of audio and you're mixing them together, as you often are when you're doing audio editing, you've got to make sure that those waveforms aren't combining in such a way that they basically cancel each other out. We call that phasing in audio editing. You want to make sure that your phasing is correct. Um, and, you, and that can happen in basically an infinite number of, of ways. It can even happen when you're playing music back 
in your home stereo system, if you have your speakers set up wrong, they can phase and the waves can cancel each other out and your music won't sound as good as it could. It could happen just by where you're standing in regards to the music that's playing or, and, and where, where it's playing from. Uh, but for our, for our purposes, that really doesn't matter too much in most editing. Um, you will notice that some voices will have a either a positive or a negative lean to them, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I haven't noticed that being a, an issue, but it is an interesting fact. And my theory, I don't really know for sure, but my theory is that that's some something it has something to do with your vocal cords and um and the tension in your vocal cords so if if true that would mean that when you're more stressed out when your vocal cords are more tense you'll see either uh probably more of a probably more of a, a negative lean to that audio uh, i'm not totally sure i haven't tested that out but i would bet that that's true so anyway this is one way of looking at audio and this is the way that most people are familiar with it. But there are other ways to look at audio, and for at least one very important reason. And that is, although you can see amplitude and you can see time in this, this graph, as it were, you cannot see one thing that's very important in audio editing, which is frequency. So how would you isolate or even look at where on the frequency scale a piece of audio is. You can't tell. All you can tell is how loud it is and how long it is based on this graph. So in Audition, I know of at least two more ways of looking at audio and both of them have frequency. And the first one that I'm going to show you is up here. If we go to this window section, go down to frequency analysis. And this opens up the frequency analysis window, which I'm going to drag over here so you can see it. This window does not include the element of time. It only includes, again, uh, it, it, it's, it's two dimensional. It includes two dimensions, which is amplitude and frequency, not time. So the way that time is depicted in this graph is instantaneously or average. So you can either see a, a, a snapshot of where the particular frequency uh, amplitude of each frequency in one spot in one moment or you can look at an average across the audio track so for this audio track I'm going to go ahead and select all hit scan selection and we'll we'll see an average for each frequency what its amplitude is and you can view this either logarithmically or linearly honestly I don't know what the difference I mean I don't I don't know why you would look at one over the other. I always choose logarithmic. That's the way that I'm familiar with looking at audio. Uh, but over here on the bottom, you'll see the hertz up to kilohertz of what the frequency is. And then over here on the right, you'll see the amplitude and starting with 100 all the way up to zero. Again, zero being the loudest it could possibly be in decibels. So for every frequency, you can see what level it is in amplitude. What's, what's useful about this, if you're mixing music, for example, you want to have a fairly good balance of, of frequencies. You don't want one frequency to be way high and other frequency to be way low, because you'll hear that when you're listening back to the audio file. You want it to be to have a pretty good frequency balance. And so this tool can be a really useful way of making sure that your audio file, once you've mixed it, has a pretty good balance. And then say it's, it doesn't have a good balance, you could go back and fine tune it. You see, okay, well, it looks like right here at 4K, uh, I've got a dip. Or maybe right here at 5K, I've got a tiny little peak. And you can go back there and, and, and using you know various tools in Audition, you can fix that. Uh, there's one other way that of uh, that you can look at audio and it's actually my favorite way and it's I find it to be the most useful and it actually combines both of these graphs in a in a in a way 
you get to see time, you get to see amplitude, and you get to see frequency. And you, if you're sharp, you're probably wondering how the, you would depict that in a two-dimensional graph. And the way that they do it is pretty cool. They, they use color to indicate amplitude. So let me show you what that graph looks like here. I'm going to go ahead and close this panel and open up what's called the spectral frequency display. The spectral frequency display is available anytime you're in the waveform editor. Just down here at the bottom of the waveform editor, you, you've got this little bar right here you can click on and drag up and boom, you've got the spectral frequency display. Now, if you've never seen this before, you're probably wondering what you're looking at. Uh, and the, the short answer is it's basically a, a waveform that's color coded to indicate amplitude as opposed to showing the line going up and down. So the brighter the color, the louder, the darker the color, the quieter. And the other part of that, this that's really useful is the frequencies over here on the right hand side. So now you can not only see how loud something is by how bright it is, but you can see which frequencies are the loudest and quietest. Now I use this, the spectral frequency display all the time. I use it constantly. And the reason that I use it constantly is because you get such fine detail in any piece of audio that you're looking at. You can see where in the frequency scale and how loud and where it is time wise. And you can really zoom in and look at something, you know, say you're trying to isolate a noise to take it out of a piece of audio. You can do that here. Uh, say you're trying to, to you know, boost up somebody's voice over the top of music. Well, how would you do that with a with a regular waveform? You can't even see the difference between the music and and the uh, the voice. Except if you know if they're layered, obviously, it's going to be louder because there's two noises on top of each other, unless they're phasing and canceling each other out, in which case it's going to be quieter. So um, it, with a waveform, it's yeah, you can kind of do it, you can kind of cheat. Uh, but you can really do it with, I mean, the best that you're going to be able to with a spectral frequency display. Let me show you an example. So this is a piece of audio with music and voice over the top. So let's play a little bit of it. It's almost here. Now, clearly this is an old piece of audio that was recorded from a, uh, an old 78 record. And you're hearing a lot of clicks and pops. Um, you're also hearing the music. You're also hearing a voice. And then you're hearing some distortion. Or it's, it's possibly just because of the, the quality of microphone that this was recorded on at the time. There's a little bit of fuzz in the voice. Well, all of that can be isolated and cleaned up. See, you see the harmonics over here of these bells. And again, if you've never seen a spectral frequency display, you may not be familiar with the fact that bells and most music and voices, in fact, have harmonics to them. It's not just one tone, it's lots of tones at different frequencies. Uh, and the same is true with, with a human voice. It's got harmonics in it. And you can look at all those harmonics and isolate them. You can also adjust the resolution of this display. So say you're, you're looking at this graph and you're not sure what you're looking at. I've got a hotkey set up, so I hit the let the number three, and I can open up this window right here that's got spectral resolu resolution on it, and I can adjust the resolution of this display. I can go up here to 2000, and I'm seeing a, a more fine-tuned display of the audio, uh, and you can play around with that and sometimes it's better to see a lower resolution and sometimes it's better to see a higher resolution and really that's kind of like zooming in and zooming out of an image. Those are the three ways of looking at audio. I, again, I use the spectral frequency display a lot 
and I'm going to do some videos in the future showing you how to use the spectral frequency display to edit audio, to, to pull out noises like sound, like that crackle that we were hearing earlier. Uh, I just wanted to do this video first so that when I sh show you the, what I'm doing with the spectral frequency display, if you've never seen that, uh, I can point you back to this video and you'll at least have you know, a quick overview of what it is. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're interested in this stuff. I've got a ton more content coming, so I'm excited for you to see it.